So Trump sat down for a town hall with George Stephanopoulos on ABC News, and watching it all the way through, it really made me wonder whether or not Donald Trump ate lots and lots of paint chips as a child, because it's not just like he's lying repeatedly and um, sounds stupid, because both of those things are true, but like he says things specifically that make me wonder if he's like delusional. He seems like he's not all there. Uh, but before we talk about the specifics, I just want to point out how much I love this picture. It might be a little bit grainy, but like it looks like George Stephanopoulos is terrified. And I don't know why Donald Trump is doing like the thumb point, but look at how much space there is between these two. And he just looks absolutely fearful for his life. And uh, I can't say I blame him because Trump is really weird. Um, and this this town hall really proves it. So um, let's start with a couple of short clips. So just last week, we got confirmation from the Bob Woodward tapes that Donald Trump did, in fact, know about the severity of COVID-19 while he was publicly downplaying it. And on tape, he admitted that he was trying to downplay it so he wouldn't cause a panic. But then at this town hall, when somebody asked, why would you want to downplay it? Um, he says, I never downplayed it. Why would you downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities. Yeah. Well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. Oh, okay. So I guess that we'll just pretend like the tapes that we all listened to last week aren't real because you say so. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You are on tape admitting that you downplayed it and you wanted to downplay it to not cause a panic. So why are you now saying that you didn't downplay it. Like, it's like me saying, I don't wear glasses. But you can see me wearing glasses. They're on my face right now. I can touch them. They're here. But I just deny it. Nope, I'm not wearing glasses. You'd think I was delusional, right? You'd think that I'm not living in the reality, in the real world that everyone else lives in. Well, I mean, that's the sense that I got from this town hall. Now, Donald Trump was asked why he won't support a national mask mandate. And... His response was incoherent, of course, but he ended up blaming Joe Biden for not instituting a nationwide mask mandate. Let me remind you, Joe Biden is not the president, but nonetheless, that didn't stop Donald Trump from blaming him, someone who currently doesn't have power, from uh, not taking action. They said at the Democrat convention they're going to do a national mandate. They never did it because they've checked out and they didn't do it. And a, qu a good question is you ask like Joe Biden, they said, we're going to do a ma national mandate on masks. He's called on all governors to have them. It is a state well, responsibility. Well, no, but he, he didn't do it. I mean, he never did it. Now, uh, there is, by the way, a lot of people don't want to wear masks. There are a lot of people think the masks are not good. And there are a lot of people that, as an example, who you have... Who are those people? I'll tell you who those people are. Waiters, they come over and they serve you and they have a mask. And I saw it the other day where they were serving me. And they're playing with a mask. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying what happens. They're playing with a mask, so the mask is over, and they're touching it, and, put, and then they're touching the plate. Uh, that can't be good. <sighs> so he literally is implying now that wearing a mask might actually be more dangerous. Great message to have the president send right now. Um, and on top of that, he blames Joe Biden for not instituting a national mask mandate. What do you want Joe Biden to do? I mean, the RNC chairwoman just last week, Ronna McDaniel, also accused Joe Biden of uh, bungling COVID-19 by saying something to the effect of, uh, you can't run from your disastrous record. Donald Trump is the president right now. You are the one with power. So why would we expect Joe Biden to institute some sort of nationwide mask mandate. Do you expect him to try to sign it into law? What are you expecting? Like, the things that he says are fucking stupid. Like, you're not all there. Like, you had to have eaten a lot of paint chips as a child or just, like, drank buckets and buckets of paint because you are a very stupid person. And it's like, I can't just say, oh, he's lying. I can't say he's just stupid because that doesn't necessarily suffice. Like, it goes deeper than that. Like, he's delusional. He is not all there. But if you think that was weird, him uh, criticizing Joe Biden for not taking action on a mask mandate, uh, listen to what he says about the military. Our military, when I came into this great office, our military was depleted. It was in the worst shape it was in probably ever. It was depleted. The planes were old and broken. The ships, everything. 
You see what I've done. I've rebuilt $2.5 trillion. And you think that was easy getting that money from Democrats? Because they don't like the military. You mean the same Democratic Party who consistently votes to increase the military budget? Are we talking about the same Democratic Party who just a month ago, uh, they voted down even a 10% cut to military spending? Is that the same Democratic Party we're talking about here? Because it seems like his perception of the Democratic Party is much different than what's happening in reality. The Democratic Party... They aren't doves anymore. The Democratic Party, they are hawkish. They expand the military. And what you are saying about it being depleted, it doesn't just sound factually incorrect. It's so wrong that it makes you sound like a fucking stupid person. Because how bad was the military when Donald Trump took office? Well, let's look at these phenomenal graphs provided to us by the brilliant Andrea Witte of ConnectedThoughtsUSA.com. Well, as you can see here, military spending reached its highest point since the Cold War during the Obama years. And on top of that, we spend more on the military than the next nine countries combined, most of which are our allies. And on top of that, we have hundreds and hundreds of military bases around the world. So to say that the military was depleted when you took office is a lie that's so outrageous that it would be more believable if you told us that there was a reptilian body underneath the orange skin that you're wearing like that is how insane it is nobody believes that the military was depleted because we have the largest military in the history of the world and you're telling us that when you took office it was depleted it was gone i mean nobody believes this even republicans do not believe this unless they are very stupid but this is just it, it's factually incorrect and it's laughable at its face but on top of that uh, healthcare came up. And of course, we know that he just nailed it, right? Uh, no, of course not. He was babbling. You know, he repeated himself multiple times. He was incoherent. But one lady, before we get to like the general conversation about healthcare, she asked him about protections for patients with pre existing conditions. And he brought up socialized medicine, Medicare for all, and not only claimed that Joe Biden supports Medicare for all, which I wish that were true, but it's not, but he claimed that under a socialized healthcare system, that is what would actually lead to discrimination against patients with pre-existing conditions. He claimed this with a straight face. And we are not going to hurt anything having to do with pre-existing conditions. We're not going to hurt pre-existing conditions. And in fact, just the opposite. If you look at what they want to do, where they have socialized medicine, they will get rid of pre-existing conditions. If they go into Medicare for all, which is socialized medicine, and you can forget about your doctors and your plans, just like you could forget under President Obama. He said, you can have your doctor, you can have your plan, and that turned out to be a lie. That might be the dumbest thing he said at this town hall. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. So you're telling me that private companies are going to discriminate against patients with pre-existing conditions under a single-payer healthcare system? That's not possible because the entire point of a single payer healthcare system is to have the government be the sole insurance provider for all of Americans. So when we're talking about patients with pre existing conditions, that's only a thing when we're discussing a private healthcare system because it's these private insurance companies that don't want to pay for these patients that have pre existing conditions because it's costly. But if you have a single payer system and you have everyone into the same health pool, then even the young and the healthy are subsidizing the health care, which is more costly for the elderly and the sick. So to say that there will be discrimination against patients with pre-existing conditions under a single payer system, it's nonsensical. Like unless the government itself is going to carve out exemptions for people with cancer or something then that wouldn't be possible. But in other single payer countries like Canada, we don't see that as a thing. Now you can say that maybe, you know, coverage won't be comprehensive if we one day get a single payer system, depending on who writes the bill. But still to say that, it's just, it, it's idiotic. Now, George Stephanopoulos, you know, probably acknowledging that he's in over his head and doesn't really know what he's talking about here, challenged him for the bevy of lies that he told and tried to get him to explain why he still won't propose his own health care plan. And this just made him look completely foolish. I have George, to stop they you have there. Socialized I, I, I just have to stop you there because it's just on a couple of points. Number one, Joe Biden has ran against Medicare for all in the primaries. But much more importantly, Obamacare guaranteed people with pre-existing conditions could buy insurance. Guaranteed they could buy it at the same price as everyone else. Guaranteed a package of essential benefits. Guaranteed that insurance companies couldn't put a lifetime limit 
on those benefits. You fought to repeal Obamacare. You are arguing. Well, I essentially did. You, you are you are arguing the, the Supreme men. Court right now to strike it down. That would do away with pre-existing no, conditions. No, so you've that we promised, can do new health care. But you've been promising a new health care plan. We interviewed. I interviewed you in June of last year. You said the health care plan would come in two weeks. You told Chris Wallace that this summer it would come in three weeks. You promised an executive order on pre-existing. I have it already. But it's you've been trying to strike down pre-existing conditions. I have it already, and it's a much better plan for you and it's a much better plan and what is when it? you say Obamacare I got rid of the individual mandate which is the worst part of Obamacare you're striking you down the whole law wouldn't be pertain to you but it pertained to a lot of people where they were going literally bust because they didn't want to have health insurance and they were paying for it anyway and it was no good Obamacare was a disaster Obamacare is too expensive the premiums are too high it's a total disaster you're going to have new health care and the pre-existing condition aspect of it will always be in my plan. And I've said that loud and clear. But and you haven't true. come up with it. And it's almost like the Republicans don't have their own health care plan because the Affordable Care Act was their health care plan. The Affordable Care Act was a neoliberal market based approach to health care reform. But because Democrats did it. Then they have to say it's bad. They have to pretend as if they don't like it when that private insurance based model of health care is exactly what they want. It's what the Heritage Foundation proposed. It's what Mitt Romney did as governor. Uh, so, I mean, it's stupid. And something else he said made me scratch my head. So he's arguing that the reason why he has to strike down the Affordable Care Act in court, which also would get rid of protections for patients with pre-existing conditions, is because he wants to do new health care. He's trying to strike that down so he can do new health care. I don't even know what that means. That doesn't even make sense. Are you saying that in order for you to pass a new health care law, you have to repeal the last one? Can't you build on it? Like if you want to keep protections for patients with pre-existing conditions, can't you just like repeal the other elements of the ACA and then build off of what you like? You don't have to get rid of one bill to do another one. Like this doesn't even make sense. He doesn't even know how the legislative process works. And it's because he uh, wants to get rid of protections for patients with pre-existing conditions. Otherwise, you already hollowed out the Affordable Care Act, so why try to kill it in its entirety unless you're trying to kill those protections and deliver for your health industry donors who don't like paying for patients with pre-existing conditions and want to discriminate against them because they're high risk. It costs them more money to cover them. Um, on top of that, he says, I got rid of the individual mandate, which is the worst part of Obamacare. Again, if you are a neoliberal, if you're a capitalist like Donald Trump is, that doesn't make sense. Because in order to make the Affordable Care Act work, you need the individual mandate. That's the crux of it, right? That forces people to buy health care on the private market. There's nothing that insurance companies love more. If people are forced to buy insurance that keeps costs down for everyone else in theory because it forces the young and the healthy to subsidize the health care of the old and the unhealthy. But when young people and healthy people don't buy health care and you get rid of that individual mandate, what happens? Prices go up because insurance companies don't make as much money and they have to cover people who tend to cost more money, who require more health care. And in order to recoup the profits that they're losing, health insurance companies raise the prices, hence why you force everyone to buy into it so it's cheaper all around. But without the individual mandate, the way that you get people to buy insurance who otherwise wouldn't, such as young people and healthy people, is you lure them in. You basically dangle some shitty cheap plan over their heads and say, hey, this will provide you with basic care. Now, if there's a disaster, they're fucked. But it gives you a couple of things that you can do. Maybe it lowers the cost of your prescription drugs. You can see your doctor occasionally. But overall, it's not actually adequate insurance. If they really need to have surgery or something, they're shit out of luck. And this is kind of what the ACA did away with. It got rid of these types of plans that are skinny plans because they're effectively... They're scamming people, right? But that's what Trump wants to do. In order to help the insurance companies make more money, he is going to allow them to basically scam people. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it and sell them these shitty plans that aren't worth a damn. Because, I mean, if you want a free market-based healthcare solution, which he does, how else are you going to do it? You have to have things like the individual mandate or you have to allow the private insurance companies to basically scam people. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like, you can't have 
good healthcare reform if you're only approaching it through this free market angle. Like, just do Medicare for all and all of this goes away. People would love you instantly. It's incredibly popular. But Donald Trump is corrupt. He'd never do that. His health industry donors would never allow him to do that. Now, this last clip that I want to play for you, this was a disaster for Donald Trump because someone finally asked him to clarify what he means by make America great again. At what time was America great for black Americans, for example? And he was stumped. He had no idea how to answer this. And it was honestly painful to watch. Uh, you've coined the phrase, make America great again. Right. When has America been great for African-Americans in the ghetto of America? Are you aware of how tone deaf that comes off to African-American community? Well, I can say this. We have tremendous African-American support. You've probably seen it in the polls. We're doing extremely well with uh, African-American, Hispanic-American at levels that you've rarely seen a Republican have. Uh, if you talk about Make America Great, uh, if you look at just prior to, and I'm talking about for the black community, you look just prior to this horrible situation coming in from China, when the virus came in, that was the probably the highest point, home ownership for the black community. Home ownership, uh, lower crime, the best jobs they've ever had, highest income, the best employment numbers they've ever had. If you go back and you want to look over many years, you could just go back six or seven months from now. That was the best single moment in the history of the African-American people in this country, I think, you know, I would say. Well, I mean, your statement is, though, make it great again. So historically, uh, the African-American experience, especially in these, out of these ghettos that have been out of red line, uh, historically, these ghettos that have systemically been set yes, up and treated yes. the way that they have been, the conditions of the drugs, the guns, and everything else that actually created the symptoms yeah. for what we see uh, that you uh, profess to be just the democratic cities than themselves. Uh, these things have historically been happening for African-Americans in these ghettos, and we have not been seeing uh, a change. Uh, quite frankly, under your administration, under the Obama's administration, under the Bush, under the Clinton, the very same things happen and the very same systems and cycles continue to, co to continue to ensue. And we need to see, because uh, you say again, we need to see when was that great? Because that pushes us back to a time in which we cannot identify with such greatness. And I mean, you've said everything else about choking and everything else, but you have yet to address and acknowledge okay. that there's been a race problem in America. So if you go, well, I hope there's not a race problem. I can tell you there's none with me because I have great respect for all races, for everybody. This country is great because of it. But when you go back six months and you take a look at what was happening, you can't even compare that with past administrations. When you look at income levels and a lot of things because of the job situation where they had the lowest income, the best, the best unemployment numbers they've ever had, the black community by far. And that was solving a lot of problems. And you know what else it was? It was bringing people together. I was starting to get, just before this was, you know, we were having a long run of success. I was starting to get calls from Democrats that, hey, it's starting to work. Let's get together. People that you would never have thought this would have happened with. There was going to be unity. But unfortunately, that was hurt because we got set back. Yeah, but I'm now... I think next year is going to be one of our best years economically. But, in, but income and a lot equality of is still happening. But in, income equality is higher. So, I mean, jobs can be produced, but at the same time, in a lot of these big major cities where African Americans are underserved, under resourced, that's an $8, eight dollar hour job does not mean that they can necessarily afford to live where they have to live or where they've been living at for the last 20 years. Well, the income inequality, which I agree with you, is a problem. I always agreed with that. But if you look under President Obama and Biden, the income inequality was phenomenal. It was, it was record setting. It was, it was It's terrible. getting worse now. Okay, that guy who asked the question, he should have been the one hosting the town hall. If any pundit or journalist in America asked Donald Trump questions that are that comprehensive and sophisticated and actually pressed him, I mean, we'd be in better shape because politicians are never held to account in that way. So kudos to him. Uh, so he followed up with Donald Trump after Donald Trump did not answer the question. Um... And he says, you haven't acknowledged or addressed the race problem in America. And Donald Trump said in response, well, I hope there's not a race problem. Oh, that that was bad. Oof, that's a yikes moment. I hope there's not a race problem in America. How 
out of touch and tone deaf can you be? You're bragging about how incredible your administration has been for black America. You do that all the time. But yet you're saying, I hope there's no race problem in America. Oh, well, gee, we all hope so, but that's not the reality. And you wonder why black people don't support you. I mean, he thinks they do. I guess like six or eight percent is something to brag about. But um, this is why, because you are a complete fucking moron. You hope there's not a race problem in America. Jesus Christ. Now, he always responds like when he's asked like a question about race, he brings up how black unemployment was the lowest ever. But that guy made the phenomenal point that these are not jobs that pay a living wage. They're eight dollar an hour jobs and we still can't afford rent. Trump had no idea how to respond to that, because how do you respond to that? You're bragging about jobs, but just having jobs in general isn't inherently good. Like, are these jobs paying you a living wage? Can you make the rent each month and put food on the table with these jobs? Like, it's an out-of-touch elitist thing to say. It's classist to say, oh, well, you know, you're, you have a job, so be happy. No, that doesn't mean that you're going to have everything you need just because you have a job. You haven't raised the minimum wage. Back in 2015 and 2016, you said that wages were too high. So, I mean, just having a job in and of itself doesn't mean that your quality of life is going to improve. And I shouldn't have to explain this to Donald Trump, but he's an imbecile. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, so he has no idea what it's like to struggle. But he then says, but if you look under President Obama and Biden, the income inequality was phenomenal. It was record setting. So I'm pretty sure that he misspoke and said the opposite of what he wanted to say. But it was phenomenal. It's really clear, even though he misspoke, he's never really thought deeply about the issue of income and wealth inequality. So this town hall was a disaster for Donald Trump. And it's funny because Laura Ingram afterwards was complaining about how he was bombarded with all of these questions. You're the president of the United States. If you can't take questions about issues that affect Americans, then you shouldn't be president. Step down, resign. But I mean, Donald Trump... He doesn't know. Like, he's in over his head. He doesn't want to be president because he wants to help people. He wants to be president because he loves the power. He loves the attention. I don't ever believe he wanted to be president in the first place. Like, he launched his presidential bid in 2015, I think, anyways, to launch a television career. There were reports that he didn't actually want to be president. So, I mean, like, you don't want to be the president. And um, <sighs> you can see there because, you know, there's there's no intellectual curiosity there when it comes to any of these issues. He doesn't even know how to respond to these is issues. And like, it's clear based on his answers to some of these issues that he hasn't even thought about these things for a second, like race in America, income inequality. It's just, it's embarrassing. This is the president of the United States. And we have so many issues that need to be addressed. So many crises that have to be addressed. And we have this dipshit who's president. It's like we live in the movie Idiocracy. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?